Hi, and welcome to International Ideas presentation on the what we call internally GSODI, the Global State of Democracy Indices. My name is Lisa Hogman. I work in the communications team, and together with me here today, I have Melida Jimenez, who works in the democracy assessment and political analysis team. And behind the scenes, we have Joe Noonan, who will show us the website that we will be talking about. But Melida, why don't you start talking a little bit about the background? Uh, what is this a democracy indices? Sort of tell us. So in 2016, International Idea embarked on this project, which is called the Global State of Democracy Project, uh, where we started to kind of develop the first large uh, democracy uh, assessment publication for International Idea. And as part and of that, yeah, I, I want to show it, of course, exactly. because that's my role. I work in the communications team. Yeah, that's the nice. <laughs> so this is the this is the big one. Yeah, that's yeah. the big publication, and we also have overviews and translations in four different languages. Um, and a website. And a beautiful website where we present uh, the content of the of the report. And we also have the global state of democracy indices, which was kind of developed as part of this project. Um, so in 2016, we started to conceptualize and design International Ideas' first quantitative democracy measurement. We have in the past worked with qualitative country uh, democracy assessments. And, and that, we have that is really based on, on this book. And this is the second edition, but that's, this is really qualitative questions. Exactly. And these are kind of uh, th this, uh, this framework, the framework uh, of the state of democracy, uh, is designed for in-country uh, qualitative analysis. So we had to kind of make the journey from an in-country in, in qualitative uh, framework into a quantitative democracy measurement. And we launched the democracy, uh, the indices in uh, November 2017 after two kind of hard uh, years of working and <laughs> I can imagine. It. Yeah. It, it's, it's a long journey going from, from something qualitative into having yeah. numbers on all countries in the world. Uh, but what are you measuring? Could you say something about the, the topics that you're looking at in these indices? Yes. Um, so first, I just want to mention that the indices in its first edition covers 155 countries, and it includes uh, country data from 1975 to 2015. And what we uh, what we measure is uh, um, democracy through kind of international ideas' own definition, and this means that we look at the representative government. We look at fundamental rights, uh, checks on government, impartial administration, and participatory engagement. All of these uh, attributes uh, are kind of taken from the original state of democracy framework, but adapted and modified uh, in order to kind of fit this quantitative uh, tool. And each attribute also has sub-attributes? In, so you can go further down and, and look at more specific... Exactly. Mm -hmm. And in total, uh, we, apart from the five attributes that I just mentioned, we cover uh, 16 sub-attributes. And underneath there, we have 98 indicators with uh, data from various sources. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Very interesting. Uh, there are other indices around. Uh, you've talked a little bit, and I can see how this is a bit different, because you're looking at the broad definition. Uh, some other indices have been criticized or accused of, of a Western bias. How, how do you handle bias? Um, so we kind of, uh, if we take it from the conceptual uh, perspective, by having a broad definition and a broad understanding of democracy, we hope to be able to capture kind of the uh, democracy uh, in its most diverse way. So as you know, no, no democracy is kind of like the other ones. So what we tried is to based on the state of democracy framework and based on international ideas, kind of understanding of, of democracy, try to be as inclusive as possible, as possible into, uh, and uh, in our measurement. And also, as you know, in some of the other measurements, they kind of look at very uh, uh, more narrow definitions of democracy or uh, just uh, specific uh, kind of characteristics. And I think that's why some people sometimes kind of say they're biased, etc. Uh, in addition, we've tried to kind of 
uh, in the way that we designed the indices, try to include as many data sources as possible. And like also, as I mentioned, we include uh, uh, data both over kind of a large number of countries, but also kind of over time. Mm. So hopefully by that, we're also able to kind of uh, go beyond maybe uh, some of the biases or some of the uh, challenges that uh, we've seen with other measurements. Okay, and now I'm actually going to ask an unprepared question for you because you mentioned it. Uh, IDEA doesn't collect the data it, uh, itself, does it? It's, no. it's uh, other people who collect the data. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, as uh, everyone knows, there are so many, uh, you know, good data initiatives around the world. There are so many good data collection going on. And what we have done is that we have uh, try to find the most suitable indicators which will measure our concept. So we've taken uh, indicators from uh, many different, uh, both kind of uh, academic initiatives and other types of initiatives, and all of this information and all kind of the data sources, etc., are available on our website as mm. well. So oh, cool. Um, so you have numbers on countries. Uh, and you measure their democracy. Um, can you compare countries? Um, actually, the indices are kind of carefully designed to actually look at democracy from a comparative perspective. This means that it encourages users to not only look at their country, but to look at their country data in comparison to either what's going on in a region, in the region, uh, or another region perhaps, who have had either similar political developments or similar experiences with conflict, etc. Uh, so while we do have kind of scores uh, per country and like individual country scores, we encourage everyone to look at the data from a comparative perspective. And also not only compare across, uh, you know, regions and countries, but also compare uh, over time. Because that's when also you find a lot of different, you know, nice variations and interesting uh, developments. Mm -hmm. Okay, because in some countries, I guess it's more obvious you have, you have development that works I mean, very fast. In other countries, such as in Sweden, where we are, you might have very slow, but, but you still have development. And it's, it, it could be hard to see it if you don't have these numbers. Yes, exactly. And I think what's important uh, with this example that you just brought in is that, in a way, uh, by having data that goes all the way, I mean, back to 1975, and there are all, also other measurements initiatives who goes uh, beyond that time, is that you kind of see that democracy takes time to build. So it's not mm -hmm. something that goes from, you know, you build in, to, in 2016 and then you're done in 2017. It actually takes time. So even if a country uh, like Sweden doesn't have like the most exciting variation uh, over time, it still shows that, you know, to keep high, high levels or lower le high levels of democracy, it's not something from one year to another. No, no. You, you can look at the trends. Um, for those who are just joining us now, uh, I just want to repeat that my name is Lisa and I work in the communications team. And together with me, I have Melida Jimenez, who uh, is, to, is our expert and is talking about our global state of democracy indices. I also want to encourage you again to add your comments and your questions in the comments field and we'll do our best to reply as soon as possible. Uh, but I think it's maybe time to have a look uh, okay. at the website uh, because it's, it's much better to understand what it is by looking at, at the, um, how it's organized. Will, yes. you, will you present it to us? Yes, I will. And I'm looking forward to it because we've actually spent a lot of effort and time to make the data accessible uh, and user-friendly as much as possible. So you don't have to be like, you know, an advanced statistician to get access to the data or understand it. So here we are uh, on our website, and at the top uh, banner, you will find um, a lot of kind of uh, uh, information behind the scenes of the indices, which means that if you click on some of these uh, tabs, you will find the methodology document, also the code book, uh, the technical procedures guide, which is kind of where we, in a very transparent and transparent and accessible way, present exactly how you go about to constructing the indices. Um, and uh, apart from that, you also have the different links to different other resources, such as the publication. But I now want to kind of show you how we visualize the, 
data uh, on our website. And the first that you will see when you go into our website is uh, our world map. And the world map is designed to kind of make it very accessible uh, to just, you know, at, at your first look, understand the data and the different developments. Uh, the cursor at the bottom uh, allows you to kind of go back and forward, and forward uh, in time so you can see the different variation across the world and you can zoom in and zoom out uh, into different countries or regions and also kind of uh, move the cursor over a country to get the specific uh, country score. It'll yeah. and, and sorry to interrupt you no, but sorry. right now we're looking at representative government yeah. and it's the world map. Uh, so it's one of the five attributes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and then you can also, uh, on the left side, kind of choose uh, other attributes or other sub-attributes and kind of move forward and just get a kind of quick uh, overview of what's going on. And this is kind of uh, a good way to just, if you just want to quickly have access without maybe having, you know, the scores, etc., still have a, a good sense of what's going on in the world at that time uh, for a particular attribute. Okay. Uh, we also have a feature where you can kind of compare the attributes uh, or sub-attributes. Um, and what you do first is you kind of choose your geographical location. In this case, we've chosen Latin America and the Caribbean. And then you choose your uh, attribute that you want to kind of drill down into and look into what's going on in, in this region. Here we've selected fundamental rights and we can also then select the sub-attributes. Uh, uh, access to justice, civil liberties, social rights and equality. And this is actually a good attribute to kind of show you how, how international ideas uh, indices differs a little bit from other measurements because it has this very inclusive uh, kind of uh, attribute which includes, for example, social rights and equality. Mm -hmm. um, so this is kind of our way to try to broaden uh, the definition of democracy. And, and this is also a way to show that some of the sub-attributes have a different development over time. Uh, it looks like the, I can't see which one, but the lowest one is moving faster um, in recent times. Uh, so you can compare the different sub-attributes. Exactly, and then you can look at, at a region or a country's development and then see, you know, where, where kind of where are the peaks or where are the, you know, where are the downhills and then most often you would kind of need to look into the region's history or some of the current events and look into, okay, what actually happened in this year or what, what was moving, uh, you know, in many different countries at the same time. Mm. So this allows you basically to kind of drill down into, into the data for a particular uh, country or region. And then we have kind of the third feature at our website, and this one allows you to uh, compare uh, countries uh, and regions over time. And uh, this is a little bit what we discussed earlier uh, in terms of looking at the data from a comparative perspective. So what you do first is you kind of choose the attribute that you want to look at, and here we've uh, selected civil liberties. And then you can just select the different regions. So you select the kind of... Um, Africa, East Africa, and West Africa, and then you can look over time. How has these developments kind of looked uh, uh, in these regions? And this allows you to uh, not only kind of have an understanding of, of, of that particular uh, attribute, but also kind of choose and select the countries of your interest. So it might be so that you're doing a project or you're doing some research on a particular country, and this feature is, uh, is particularly useful to kind of you know, select a couple of countries and, and compare uh, different uh, attributes and different developments. It also has a feature uh, where you can kind of download uh, your uh, graph, the graph that you have kind of self, you know, selected you, yourself. And this is particularly useful if you're writing an article or you want to include this in some of your work or analysis. It's very easy accessible and you don't uh, need to kind of, you know, know uh, any statistical programs or etc to get you, you get a to good get your image graph. that you can exactly. use yeah and lastly we have a feature which allows all the users to kind of get a good snapshot of uh, of the data uh, for a country or a region and 
again, we have the timeline with the cursor where you can move it back and forward, but this is more of a uh, kind of, of a snapshot because it focuses on the scores for that particular uh, year that you have selected and the particular country. Uh, it allows you to also compare uh, with uh, the regional and global uh, levels. And you can see here then, then it's again, it will be like the one year score, but it will yeah. still give you kind of the context. And that's why we how can... that country fits into a region or a sub region. Yeah, and yeah. how it fits with the other developments. So because in some instances, you can be like, so what does 0 0.43 means, right? Mm -hmm. But you put that score in, in, in um, comparison with the other scores, then it gives a little bit of a meaning. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is how it uh, uh, is in the rest of the Caribbean or in the world, etc. And it gives you a little bit more of a context for those of you who, you know, uh, can be, uh, you know, puzzled by the different meaning of the of the numbers. Me, myself, I'm sometimes uh, a bit confused as well. <laughs> but, but this is really helps. how you can compare a country or a region with itself yeah. over time. Yeah, and yeah. put some meaning behind the numbers in particular, yeah. so that 0 0.43 means something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We also have a feature on the website where you kind of can go in and again for those of us who like numbers we can just look at the scores directly and find that very amusing uh, and you know there are others who won't find it amusing but <laughs> for those who, who does who do like looking at scores you can look at uh, this uh, table and you go into the website and you move the cursory back and forward to the year that you want but also you can download then your table or uh, download the whole raw data set for those Okay, so you could use that data to, to exactly. develop your own models. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's very interesting. Um, yeah, sorry, did you have more? No, <laughs> that's it. And I would also encourage everyone uh, to visit this website and kind of play around, explore the data, let us know if there's anything uh, you, uh, you would like to learn more about, and also if you have any questions on how to understand the data the data, the website and the data in itself. And in general, the global state of democracy indices, it's not for international idea, it's for the users out there and it's for everyone who are interested to analyze democracy uh, over time and in different countries. So enjoy and have fun basically. <laughs> I'm not gonna let you off the hook that easy uh, <laughs> because you're talking about others doing analysis but IDEA spent a lot of time and effort doing its own analysis last year and, and with the report and using the indices. Uh, were there any interesting conclusions? What, what, what did you come up with? Um, yeah, so last year we had, uh, once we were done with the indices uh, after a lot of work, we also had the opportunity to kind of uh, have a first shot in analyzing the different trends and different developments uh, and we have presented this analysis in the first chapter of the Global State of Democracy report and uh, one of our key findings is that with our data uh, and especially with a diverse uh, definition of democracy is that we don't find the same type of uh, decline in democracy that we've heard in other reports or in other analysis uh, uh, on the it's contrary, more positive. it's a little bit yeah. more positive uh, at the global level and we've seen progress over time. So mm -hmm. at the moment we're looking at kind of the highest levels of democracy uh, around the world. However, of course, uh, our data uh, also shows a great deal of variation at the country level and that's why also we kind of emphasize on digging down and exploring the data mm -hmm. and looking at you know the different regions, subregions, etc. But at the global level, we see a positive picture. Uh, what we also found in our analysis was that the levels of impartial administration haven't uh, moved uh, haven't uh, moved significantly since 1975. Uh, so the levels for for that specific attribute remains stable or and stagnant. And what is impartial administration? If it you could just sort of more It plainly. measures uh, kind of the levels uh, of corruption, mm. which we in our uh, measurement calls absence of corruption, and it also measures predictable enforcement. So in general, kind of elements related to the rule of law and, and anti-corruption. Uh, and those are the elements that 
based on the first initial findings uh, in our data, we see that countries are still struggling with as much in 2015 as, as they did in, two th in 1975. 75. Maybe for different reasons, but still one of the uh, character, uh, one of the elements in a democracy that seems uh, challenging for countries across the world, something that they have in common. Okay. Uh, on a final note, what does the future look like for the indices? You said it covers up until 2015. Are you planning on, on adding more data? We're currently actually working on updating it, and we're now uh, trying to updating it, update the indices with data to 2018, with release in 2019. So we're adding three more years, and it's going to be very interesting for us to see, you know, what uh, what the data shows in terms of some of the most recent country developments mm. and some of the most recent kind of uh, um, political crisis in different uh, areas of the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very thank much you. for joining us and thank you to all of you out there. Please add your comments. Uh, we look forward to answering them.